Hi, this is lesson 3.5, the graph scale change video number two. All right, so let's look at the graphs of um, these scale changes. So it says sketch the following graphs, write the scale change, and describe the stretch. So what I want to do in order to do this is, we're not going to do this every time we graph, but I just want to do this to kind of show you the actual effect of a scale change. So I'm going to start off with the parent function, y equals x squared, and I'm going to make up a table. Okay. And for my x values, I'm going to pick the following. And for my parent function, when I do x squared, I would get 36, 9, 0, 9 and 36. That is my parent function. And I'm going to graph that. Obviously, I can't graph that first point. I can graph the second one, negative 3, up 9. Zero, 0, and then negative 3, and up 9 again. And I'm going to graph this in pencil, and I'll remind myself that this is x squared. Okay, it's the parent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a table that is x and the image, or the scale changed function, x divided by 3 squared. And I'm going to use the same points. Now you can probably see why I chose these numbers, because I wanted numbers that were going to be divisible by 3. So when I divide negative 6 by 3, I get negative 2. When I square negative 2, I get positive 4. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. Square negative 1, I get positive 1. Square, then take 0 divided by 3 is 0. Square 0, I still get 0. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Squared is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. All right, so now I'm going to graph these. And I am going to highlight these just so that I can kind of um, see the difference. So this is going to be my scale change. I'm going to do an orange. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 1, 5, 6, and that is, and I wanted you to see how it actually affects the graph. Because a lot of times people get confused. Well, why would dividing actually stretch it out more? And I wanted you to see that that's actually what happens. And so my scale change for this is x gets multiplied by 3 and y does not change at all, which means horizontally I get a stretch, which is exactly what happened. I ended up with a horizontal stretch. All right, so let's look at the next one in um, our next graph. I'm going to again start off with my parent function, which is going to be my y um, equals x squared. It's going to be my parent function again, that quadratic. And so I'll do my x and my x squared, and this time I'm going to choose just negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Square each one of those, and I'm going to graph my parent. So here is my parent function. Okay, that's my parent. 
And now I'm going to do my side, my scale changed one. Now remember, we square the x and then we multiply by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 times 2 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. And this is going to, once again, be my scale changed. Negative 2 and up 8, negative 1 and up 2, this one is really, really tight, but I can see that it has changed, and so my scale change. Let's look here. Now notice that 2 is not in parentheses with the x, so it is not affecting the x. It is, however, affecting the y, and y tells the truth. So all I get is a vertical stretch, which is exactly what happened. I know we have these two other examples that I had here, but we're actually going to skip these. So we are not actually going to do these two. I feel like we got enough information from the two graphs that we did. All right, so let's look now at example three. Example three asks us to find the x-intercepts and the vertex for the function x squared minus 9. Now these are intended to be non-calculator problems, so we are going to focus on how we could do this without a calculator. So first of all, x-intercepts are found by um, letting y equal 0. So 0 equals x squared minus 9. I could add 9 to both sides. And I get that 9 equals x squared. In order to solve for x, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I get that x equals plus 4 minus 3. Remember, if you insert that square root, you don't know whether I want the positive or negative root, so you have to give me both. Therefore, the x-intercepts are positive 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. The vertex, well, in order to find the vertex, if I don't have a calculator, I remember that x equals the opposite of b all over 2a. Well, when I look at my quadratic here, my a value is 1. There isn't a b value, so it must be 0, and c is negative 9. So the opposite of b is 0 over 2 times 1. Well, 0 divided by anything is simply 0. So the x value is 0. And in order to find the y, I just substitute the 0 into the equation. 0 squared is 0 minus 9 is negative 9. So we end up with 0 squared minus 9, which is negative Nine. So my vertex is 0, negative 9. All right, so it says use the coordinates found in part A to find the x-intercepts and vertex of this function here. That is obviously a scale change and a translation of well, not, I'm sorry, not a uh, translation. It is a scale change of the above. They both have the x squared and the minus 9, but the x is being multiplied by 3, and the y is being multiplied by 2. So I know that my x here in the equation is being multiplied by 3, 
which means it must be x divided by 3. And then my y is being multiplied by 2, so 2y. Two so that tells me that my x's are going to be divided by 3 and my y's are going to be multiplied by 2. This is what is actually going to happen. So my new x-intercepts I'm going to divide my x's by 3. 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. 0 stays 0. Negative 3 divided by 3 becomes negative 1. So all I'm doing is following the rule. I'm dividing my x-coordinates by 3. I don't have any y's to multiply. 2 times 0 is simply still 0. 2 times 0 is still 0. So these are my new x-intercepts and my new vertex. Uh, let's see. 0, when I divide that by 3, I still get 0. And negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. So all I did was apply my scale change to the x-intercepts and vertex that I found above. So how does the scale change um, affect the points? You use the scale change to multiply or divide x and y to get the new coordinates. So for number one, my parent function would be y equals x squared. My scale change is going to be x is going to get multiplied by 5 because x lies, and nothing happens to the y. There's no multiplier out in front. For the next one, once again, I have y equals x squared. This time, my scale change, let's see, the 5 is not affecting the x because it's not in parentheses with the x. Therefore, the 5 must be affecting the y. So it's 5 times y because y tells the truth. Next one, I've got y equals the absolute value of x. Notice the 3 is outside of the grouping symbol with the x, so it does not affect the x. So nothing at all is happening to the x, but the y is getting multiplied by 3. All right, once again, what's my parent? y equals the square root of x. Um, since the 6 is in the grouping symbol with the x, that is affecting the x. It's being divided in the equation, so it must be multiplied in the scale change. x lies. Here it's multiplied, here it's divided. This 2 is outside the grouping symbol, so it's affecting the y. The next one. Write the function that describes the parent function, y equals x cubed, with a horizontal stretch by a factor of 5. So we want the scale change to stretch it by 5, so that's 5 times x, and a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half. So 1 half y. I could also just write this as y divided by 2. Either way. So when I go to write this using this equation, y equals, I'm going to make x divided by 5 because it lies in the equation, cubed, and I want the whole thing multiplied by a half. For these last two, I'd like to see if you guys can figure these two out on your own. 